That situation Susan describes plays into another worrisome trend, the growing income gap between the rich and everyone else. It's a hot topic for lawmakers and for hot academics too. Just listen to the latest IT economist, Francis Thomas Piketty. Senior business correspondent Amanda Lang caught up with him to pick his brain. Hey there, Amanda. Wendy, income inequality is a global phenomenon. Even people with jobs are seeing their share of the increase in growth shrink. For a long time, common wisdom has been that free markets and capitalism would help adjust that, that ultimately workers would share in the gains that investors enjoy. Now Thomas Piketty has upended that idea and in fact shows that the opposite may be true. Let me stress, you know, in, in every developed country, the bottom half of the population right now has less than 5% of national wealth. You know, it's even 2% in the U.S. And the next 40% in the population, which I call the patrimonial middle class in my book, has usually, you know, 20 to 25% of total wealth. So, you know, I think we can do better than that. You know, I'm not saying we should have perfect equality of wealth, but, you know, less than 5% for the half of the population is, is really very little. So I think we can increase access to wealth uh, through various ways. Uh, progressive taxation is one of them. Piketty's central argument is that as long as the return on capital is higher than the growth of an economy, wealth inequality is inevitable. And he says the current situation may get worse. He has a series of suggestions. One of those is a progressive tax on wealth that essentially rewards people for putting money to work, but taxes capital that is idle. That's partly because the wealthy can afford to save in a way that middle classes can't. Another is to look at policies around wages and forcing them higher, though like many economists, Piketty sees a limit on the value of a minimum wage. Investment in education continues to be an important way to spread wealth. And finally, finding ways for workers to have a bigger share of capital would help giving them shares in the businesses they work for, for instance. You know, these are all uh, complements. You know, we don't want to choose between one or the other. We want all, for instance, you know, it's easier to have a higher minimum wage if you have more investment in education, in skills, so that people can actually have access to high productivity and high paying jobs. The most important thing Thomas Piketty may have done with this book is bring real hard data to a problem that is now perceived to be universal and keep the issue front and center for policymakers. Wendy? Thanks so much, Amanda. Amanda Lang.